All right, welcome to this week's podcast, the Mike Pincus Fitness Podcast, and it is brought to you by me, Mike Pincus, and Jonathan and Michelle. And today's going to be uh, really going to be a different one. I keep saying they're all going to be different, but this one's going to be different because I have no idea where this one's heading uh, because the fact is that my guest is uh, Dan, and I know of Dan through following on Instagram. Because Dan and his buddy Sam, Dan and Sam, Sam I am, uh, Sammy's not here to defend himself, so I'm sorry, Sammy, that you're going to be uh, enduring some of this, because I have a feeling it's going to be painful for you. But uh, these two guys decide to ride their bicycles across America. That is from Santa Monica to New Jersey. Oh, it's New York. To New York, yeah. sorry. Really across America. Yeah. Not just part way, but they actually went the full distance. Ocean to ocean. There you go. And uh, so I followed them on Instagram, and we're going to get into this uh, of, of why uh, I wanted to have these guys on. Unfortunately, Sammy can't be with us, but Dan is here, and he is going to share his story. So welcome to the podcast, Thank first you. and foremost. Thank you for having me. And let's see where we're going to get this started. Um, First, we'll just do a quick background. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Thousand Oaks, California. Weird. We're in Thousand Oaks, yeah, California. I didn't get far. Didn't get far. No. Yeah, yeah, you rode your bike to New York and back. I did. Well, Actually, I don't York, understand why. Back. Yeah, I don't understand. I was the one that commented, why aren't you guys riding back? Because... Like, real men would have rode back. They would have, but you know what? I decided I'm not a real man, and I <laughs> okay. can be anything I want to be. So. That, that's fair. <laughs> that's totally fair. I wouldn't have ridden to Bakersfield, so... Um, all right, so you grew up in Thousand Oaks, and Thousand Oaks. Uh, Sammy's not here, but what's the connection with Sammy? So Sammy and I grew up in like parallel worlds in the same town. Uh, I believe he moved here probably two years after I did in elementary school. Uh, we went to the same middle school. Um, didn't really start hanging out till high school, and then we just happened to go to the same college together. Uh, Where'd you for, go to school? We went to Brooks Institute of Photography. Oh, in Santa Barbara. RIP. No longer around, but oh, okay. when we went, it was an awesome school. Yep. Um, so, you know, we did that together, and yeah. Both photographers? Both photographers. Okay. He's uh, the real professional, because he's still doing it, and <laughs> I started doing other things, and now I work in the world of construction. Okay. Terrific. Yeah. When did you go to Brooks? We started in 2004, and we both graduated in 2007. Wow. Very cool. Where'd you go to high school? T.O.? Westlake High School. Westlake. Yeah, okay. We both went to Westlake. Very cool. Um, oddly enough, my sister-in-law went to Brooks. Um, she graduated from Agora, and I don't remember. How old are you? I am 34. Okay. So she would have been older than you. Um, but yeah, she also went to Brooks for photography as well. So really cool school. Great school. Um, all right. So when do you guys get into cycling? Okay. So we're in, I would say maybe a year from graduating and, a fellow classmate showed us his bike. He was biking all over Santa Barbara and it was a fixed gear. It was an old track bike. Okay. It was an old, I think it was a Bianchi probably from the eighties. Mm -hmm. Um, and I thought it was awesome, but he was like, you should try to ride this thing. And it's a fixed gear. I'm not used to that. I'm used to like a free will BMX. So I'm in the parking lot and I get on this thing and I'm like, this is gnarly. I can't, I can't do this. But I was still intrigued and I was like, I need to write, I need to try this. So I ended up buying one maybe like, I don't know, a month later just to, you know, mess around on a fixed gear or a fixed gear. Yeah. Right. For those that don't know, what is a, explain a fixed gear? So essentially well, a fixed gear is a track bike that they use on the velodromes okay. and it's a single gear and it has no free will. So you have to pedal to move the bike. If your feet don't move, the wheel stops and then you fall. Can't you, pedal backwards. You can pedal backwards. Okay. Oh, you can do all the cool tricks. Well, you pedal backwards. You're going to you, get, you go backwards. You go backwards. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So that's how we started. I mean, it was kind of like Sam and I were doing this together. Right. It's just kind of the evolution of what happened. So started riding bikes, and um, I loved it instantly, um, just as like my own athletic background. I played hockey growing up, so I played hockey from the time I was um, in like a real league. I was seven until I was 18. Okay. So I played, you know, 10 months out of the year. That's right. all I did was play hockey, and we played all over the place. Yeah, it was travel league, and then we played tournaments all over the country and then into Canada. 
And um, when I aged out at 18, I really did not know what to do to fill that gap. Right. That was my athletic outlet. That was my, for the most part, physical uh, teen angst aggro outlet as well. Sure. So when I found cycling, I was like, wow, this is giving me the same like endorphin rush as hockey was. Um, okay. Completely different because one's an endurance sport. The other one's like massive sprinting. And um, it was something I was just super into. Do and you I've, check people? Like when you're in a Peloton group, do you feel the need to check people into? No, but I like definitely. drop a shoulder. and I don't have fear of people bumping me though. <laughs> yeah, we just have, should have fear. <laughs> yeah, I just, I've been bumped a couple times and I have been on the uh, better side of that. Yeah, I would sure, imagine. Because I, yeah. Yeah. Did uh, Sammy play hockey as well? He did, but you know he's he's more of a fan of hockey. Okay. He played roller <laughs> hockey growing up. I mean, we didn't know each other through that. But Sammy's like one of those guys where it's you meet Sammy and he's a cool dude, but it's just unfair what he can do athletically okay. because he can figure something out. He's got like this half Asian kid thing going for him um, <laughs> where he can just do anything, and it's just not fair. Like he can go out and like rip at skating, super good at surfing. So when we started getting into bikes. I'm like, dude, I'm not even going to try to compete with this guy because automatically he's going to be better. Right. He's like, you know, I'm 6'4 on a good day. He's 5'8, 5'9. And, you know, he's going to be a great climber. I'm right. not on a bicycle. And yeah. It's just so, you know, we'll talk about that later in the, yeah. in the, on the, Perfect. the recording. But it was, it was interesting. It was so. Where are we at? We're jumping so back got, to cycling. That's right. Yeah. So you got into bike. So yeah. you've got a fixed gear. Yeah. Did Sammy get a fixed gear as well? Sammy. No, so I got a fixed gear, and then Sammy bought this awesome Schwinn Paramount. I don't maybe it wasn't a Paramount. It might have been like whatever the one below the Paramount was, okay. but it was from like the mid '80s at the um, the Salvation Army in Newberry Park. Oh my! Gosh. They were having a bike sale for some reason. They had way too many bikes, and this was before the fixed gear craze got out of control, where everyone was getting like a used steel right. road bike. So he bought this old ten speed. It was so cool. It was like it was. It was like old Chargers colors. It was uh, like the blue, that royal blue and the really vibrant yep. yellow. So he had that bike, and then that's what he would cruise around on. So we would start riding and doing all that kind of stuff. And then like right before we graduated, or maybe the, a few days after, I'm like, dude, we need to go do like a really long bike ride. And he's like, okay, where are we going? I'm like, let's ride from Thousand Oaks, Westlake area to Disneyland. Okay, wow. I'm going to ride fixed gear. And you're going to ride your bike, whatever, whatever we can. Oh my gosh. And that was kind of like inspired by some fable, if you'll call it that, of these kids that we grew up with that were maybe five years older, supposedly. And I don't know if this is actually true. They rode BMX bikes from Westlake to to Disneyland. Really? This was, you know, we we heard (laughs) this stuff when we were in high school and we're like, right, that's crazy. I don't know if it was true, but it was enough to like get me like going, okay, I can do this. So we rode... We left like really early in the morning, rode out to Disneyland, and it was the hardest thing I've ever done. And it was surface street. So like typically it's a 60-mile drive. It was 80 miles. Oh, my god! And I had never ridden more than like 15 or 20. And I'm like, okay. So and we're riding in cut-off shorts, oh, this T-shirts, is courier bags, and whatever, you know, janky helmets we right. had just to pretend like we were protecting something. Exactly. Clearly and not. No. Yeah. And that was that. I mean, that was like the start of all this. Like wow. That when that was nineteen or nineteen. That was two thousand seven. Okay. Wow, it wasn't that long ago. No, that's crazy. It wasn't, I mean, um, all right, and then uh, eventually you work your way up to getting into Franco bikes. Yeah. So we started riding road bikes probably six months after that, and okay. started extending the rides okay. because we realized like riding fixed gears, doing lake laps, trying to sabotage like you know. Right a fast Friday's ride wasn't going to work out well for us because we just can't get the top end going fast enough. So, um, we were both riding whatever road bikes and a friend of ours named Norm, who was friends with Julian Franco had, I believe the first Balcom prototype, which was this old white gray with like a red Franco logo. Yep. And I want to say Hector designed that. I'm not 100% hmm. sure he designed know. the logos, maybe. Right. But um, I was like, oh, what's that bike? And he goes, oh, it's Franco. It's like a new company that's coming up, and they're local. I'm like, that's awesome. Right. And um, 
I don't know, like six months went by, maybe eight. Sammy ended up getting one. Okay. And he, I saw it, and I was like, dude, this was the first Balcom. I think he got like the third one. All right. What color? Uh, it was the original black one. The black with the, with with the, the gray stripes yeah. and the gray logo. Yeah. And I was like, dude, I need this. I need this bike. It's so cool looking because it's completely different than everything else that was yeah, out there at the time. Exactly. You know, everyone else had these. Anyone that was riding road bikes was like, oh, I saw it in the Peloton or the Tour de France. This is what I want. Yep. It's like, okay, no, I want to be so far away from that. I'm coming from like the subculture of like fixed gear road riding bikes. And like, I just don't want to be part of like that group. So Franco to me was like the way to go. Perfect. Um, yeah. So we get into that. Um, I called Julian. And he goes, all right, yeah, um, I got to frame your size. I just built this awesome Belgian wheel set on Chris King hubs. Are you interested? And I'm like, dude, I don't even know what Chris King hubs are. <laughs> I know head wheels, but I don't know what Belgians are. And they were 32 spoke, maybe 28 spoke, but they were like heavy gauge spoked. And I'm like, yeah, dude, cool. Pretending like I know what I'm talking right, about. Exactly. So he shows up or he tells me to go to Wins Wheels. So I go yep. to Wins Wheels and he shows up in his Honda Element and pulls the bike out of the box. <laughs> and I'm like, just the frame. It wasn't even assembled. And he just told me oh. to bring a bib and a t-shirt and my shoes. So we get on the bike and I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. And I'm like paying like, I don't know, it was like four grand for a road bike. Yep. And I'm like, dude, what am I doing? This is insane. So we get road bikes and Sam and I, of course, have the same road bike. Weird. And then... <laughs> Um, yeah, that's how I got into Franco Wow! from Julian, the back of Julian's car. That's awesome. Wins wheels. Yeah. And that, that's so cool. My, my story wasn't, uh, well, it was definitely different in that, but how I ended up with Franco, um, I had a bike that I had been riding a Calfee and I too did not like the look of all of the big name brands, mm -hmm. uh, because their name was everywhere yeah. on it. And so I was actually looking to get, I didn't want to replace my Calfee. I just wanted a, a new bike. I'd been riding a while and I wanted something that was snappy. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even know what that meant, but it sounded good. And so I was looking at all these other bikes and I literally found a motorcycle shop in TO and asked him if he could paint a bike for me. And he's like, yeah, not a problem. And I said, all right, so I'm going to, I'm going to buy this and I'm going to have it completely torn apart strip it down and then we're going to paint it and just no name on it, just total solid colors. And he's like, okay, great. What color? I'm like, I have no idea, but yeah, I can do that. Great. So I'm in winds and there's Franco's up on the wall. I'm like, well, that's a cool bike. And it just has Franco on it. I'm like, what's that about? And so he tells me, he's like, oh, it's a new bike coming to the area and they're moving in right across the street. Matter of fact, they're there now. Yeah. And so I go across the alley and there's Julian and Hector in there and a few of the other guys and, um, gets talking to him and I'm getting a, that black Balcom yep. with the gray and going with, um, entry level, maybe one Oh five Shimano, okay. literally about to finish the sale. And behind his desk is a frame in bubble wrap in the rear triangle is sticking out and it's matte black with yellow stripes. Okay. Yeah. And I'm like, what is that? And he's like, Oh, well that's really cool. And he starts telling me, he's like, Oh yeah, we've got the SRAM LTE coming in. I'm like, Oh yeah, that, that's awesome. I have no idea what that means. And it was the SRAM red LTE limited tour edition, 2010. And there were, a, from my understanding, 1100 were made and certain dealers were getting their hands on them. He knew he was getting his hands on one. So he had a bike made to match the matte black and the yellow stripes. And, uh, I said, well, that's pretty cool. He's like, Oh, you got to check it out. So he takes it out of the bubble wrap, take it out in the parking lot. He's like, guys, see this in the sunlight. I'm looking, I'm like, wow, this is really cool. He's like, it's your size. I'm like, is it for sale? He's like, everything's for sale. I'm like, okay. Classic so, an answer. <laughs> yeah. So then he tells me the price. I'm like, Oh no, there's no way. This is like two grand more than what I was coming in for a second bike. I'm not getting rid of my Calfee. I'm like, my wife is going to kill me. So I said, nah, I, let me think about this. And he's like, well, you can call her. I'm like, I could, but I'm not gonna. So I ended up going home and I said, so I explained it all. And she said, which blew me away. She said, if you don't do it, you're going to be kicking yourself. In the long run, you, you know, you used your Calfee to death. Like you're not buying this and sitting on the shelf. You're going to use this. And I said, yeah. I think she thought I was selling the Calfee. Okay. Well, so I didn't tell her different. And, um, so I ended up getting the black and yellow and had that for 
uh, eight years. I remember that bike. Yeah, I, rem- awesome. I remember when they built that thing yeah, up because at that point I was in and out of that shop all the yeah, time. Exactly. And I, I definitely remember yeah. that bike. It was so, so, I loved it. Absolutely loved it. And then, uh, eventually I sold the Calfi just purely because I, I didn't like the feel of it yeah. now that I was on the Franco. And then, um, recently, um, graduated to the Latigo. Okay. And it's just like, wow. Yeah. Crazy. That Balcom had that. Yeah. I loved that bike. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So was, do you still have that Balcom? No. So, uh, 2014, 15, they started doing those steel, um, Grimes prototypes. Yep. And I was like, I need this. I need right. this bike bad. Right. This is, this is cool. Right. And, um, at that point I was doing a lot of longer rides okay. and being on a race fit bike it just ergonomically wasn't feeling well, like good for me. Yeah. It just wasn't fun. You get back home and you're, you know, you just got back pain and all that kind of stuff. So Hector was like, I don't have one in your size, but pretty much what's going to happen is that these are a more lax geometry. They're not a cross bike, but they're not a road bike. They're somewhere in between. Okay. Um, it's not as aggressive. I was like, yeah, I don't care. Just, I want it. Right. I'll have it. So when they got them in, into production, I think I was, I was number two. Wow. Because Christian, the employee at the time, yeah, I remember Franco, he got one before me. Okay. Made me, my ego a little hurt, but <laughs> you know, he got, he got the first one, but I got the second one. Perfect. And I will say mine has a lot more use than his. I'm just going to make a little <laughs> jab at him. Um, but yeah, and I, that's the bike I still ride today. Wow. Yeah. Now was the, uh, Grimes, uh, originally designed as a gravel bike? It was my go-to for anything. Okay. Um, at that point, gravel was like infancy. It yeah, was I was going to say, because it was either cyclocross or yeah. a road bike. Right. And, and then, we didn't know gravel. Yeah. So there was, let's back, let me try to figure this Which out. Which is crazy, because it's yeah. only five years ago. Right. But it, how it's blown it's up. It's blown up huge. And yeah. it's, it's fun. I mean, it's, yeah. it, there was, you know, the... the uh, the Morton brothers, Lachlan and Gus Morton, they did a documentary about, you know, Lachlan, Lachlan's in the Pro Tour. Um, Gus is not, you know, he was, but then he just got burned out. Okay. And they did this ride where they went from, I, I want to say Sydney, somewhere east side of Australia to the middle of the country, and that, that big rock, I forget okay. the name of it. But they rode out there, and they were doing dirt roads and all this kind of stuff, and they had... You know, they were riding cross bikes, but they had fatter tires and they were running disc brakes. And you're like, whoa, disc brakes on a road bike. Wow. And I'm like, okay, this is like kind of inspiring. This is right. cool. So I, automatically I was like, okay, I want a bike that I can run like 32s on. and be right. comfortable and not have to run 25s or 23s anymore. I'm over it. So I saw that movie and I was like, okay, gravel roads are cool. We have gravel roads here. Sure. So, you know, it was inspiring just from that standpoint where I'm like, Very okay, cool. we can go do whatever. Yep. So I got that bike. Um, originally, I had a wheel set, um, and I was running, just swapping out tires, depending. I'd run a 28 or 32 uh, road tire. Okay. I'd run, uh, at the early stages of this stuff, I don't think people were making much over a 35, because cyclocross tires, I don't think UCI was allowing them to run 35 or plus. So um, there was a couple companies running 38s, maybe, or 42s. Um, so I was running those. And I was like, this is so awesome. We'd go down to the coast through right. Sycamore, and it was like oh, yeah. no big deal. You're flying by guys on mountain bikes on the flats. Obviously, on the climbs, you're beating them too, but on the descents, they were just smoking right. us. But I'm exactly. like, whatever. I'm yeah. doing a road ride and then going riding 30 miles on the asphalt. So, so cool. I'm stoked. So cool. So, yeah, yeah, the first time we got those bikes, again, this backs up to Sammy being a photographer. They wanted to kind of document this bike. Um, so, we go up to Big Sur for our friend Greg's wedding, and I'm like, dude, we need to go up and bring the bikes. So we, Sammy got a loaner from Franco because he didn't have one at the time, um, and we ride from Big Sur Lodge, which is in Julia Pfeiffer State Park, ride north, go over Bixby Bridge. Yep. When you get to Bixby Bridge, um, it's closed now. It might be open again, um, but there's uh, Coast Road. Okay. which is the old road. It's all dirt and it goes below Bixby and then wraps the canyons. So you go about 15 miles up and then another 22 miles back to where we started wow. all on dirt roads. And that was like surreal. You get ocean breeze, the smell oh, of the ocean so cool. with the redwoods and there's no cars on this road really because there's only a few cabins back there. Right. And we're riding through there on these bikes. And I was like, dude, this is why I bought this bike. This is it's so surreal. Perfect. Yeah. It's unreal. It was amazing. That's crazy. So that was when did Sammy get his Grimes? 
he just got it. Oh, um, really? Yeah. Okay. In the last, he has the second edition of the Grimes. Okay. So a little bit more wheel uh, tire clearance. He got that I don't know, a year and a, a year ago, maybe. Okay. Both on steel. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So we both went okay. across the country on steel bikes. So that gets us to this next part, which is the uh, the part that I think um, a lot of the listeners are going to be fascinated by. I I think so. I think it's just it's a kooky idea, um, and it's uh, it's crazy. But um, you guys decide to ride across America. How did this come about? Um, How many beers were involved in the conversation? No beers. Actually, you know, it's funny. Neither one of us drank, which was even more shocking to a lot of people because right. they're like, "Why are you doing this?" Right. Um, so back in 2013, um, the guys who run Leave It on the Road, uh, it's a nonprofit to raise uh, money for um, research for prostate cancer. Okay. They're a full-blown nonprofit now. Um, they were doing a ride from Oregon to Boston or to Massachusetts okay. as far out as they could go. Yep. And um, even this was like early Instagram days, so there was no Instagram stories. And... Uh, Strava was, I think Strava was around. It, it was probably around. It was because that came out in 2009, I think. But I wasn't following them on Strava. I was sure. only following them on Instagram. So they said they were doing this ride. And then every day they would post the route and they would post a picture of the ride. And I saw these pictures and I'm like, I need to do this. This is incredible. Right. Like this is the coolest ride. So every day, um, you know, on construction hour lunchtime, which was like 10 a.m., we're, we're sitting, I'm sitting around, you know, eating lunch and just waiting for my Instagram because they would always update around 10 o'clock at the previous day's route in the picture. And I would see these pictures and I was blown away. I'm like, this is something I need to do. Wow. So that started the process of thinking about right. doing this. Right. Um, and then there How many was, were in that group? Did they have a big group? They had, it it was two guys. Um, and then I believe they had one guy running the SAG vehicle and then maybe a photographer. Okay. I I don't know the exact details, but, um, yeah, that was, and then they were all wearing Rafa and I was like, Oh, well, Rafa's awesome. I like Rafa. These guys are awesome. They're running Rafa. Yep. And I think they had Scratch involved somehow. And this was early Scratch days too, as far as I know, because I didn't know Scratch too well until the last, like, Maybe four years. Yeah, that's about right. So, um, yeah, so I see this, and then that just gets, you know, the gears turning. And then what else happened? I watched uh, this documentary called Ride the Divide, which is about doing the uh, Continental Divide from Canada down to Mexico, self-supported, which is insane. And I was like, that's awesome. And then the last thing I saw was... um, the inspired to ride, which is kind of like a sequel, which is the Trans America race. Oh yeah, they yeah. go from um, where do they go from Oregon to Virginia Beach in Maryland, and that's a forty five hundred mile route. And these guys were doing it like eighteen to twenty five days, and I'm like, that's a whole different level. I don't want to race it, but I want to right. do something like this. Yeah. Um, so last summer, I was doing the uh, what was I doing? I was doing the Santa Monica mountain challenge. Okay. And I set a goal for myself to do all 60 of the climbs. Oh, wow. I'd never run a day in my life, but I was like, I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> so I ended up doing all 60 and I was like, all right, I can do this. I can ride across the country. Like I set a goal for myself. That's achievable from my front door. I can achieve something that's significantly longer right. and harder essentially. Right. So I started putting together routes, and I was using the uh, America, what is it, Amer- Adventure Cycling maps. And I was, there's no direct route for the route, route I wanted to do, so I kind of patched them together. Okay. And sat on this route from August until this past May and just said, all right, I'm going to do this. Where was Sammy's involvement in this? I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Absolutely not. And so I this like, was a hundred percent your idea. Y- yeah. 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 I mean, it was just like, I'm going to do this. And it, regardless if people come with me or not, I'm going. So people thought I was absolutely nuts. Cause right. we're not, we have no SAG vehicle. I had, um, a SAG self- vehicle for those that don't know is, is a car supporting you and bringing you food and right. carrying all your crap that you don't want to carry on your exactly. bike. Um, so people thought I was nuts. They're like, there's no way you're going to make this. I'm like, no, that's not 
true at all. I will make this. Whether I come back to the same person <laughs> exactly. is a different story. Because prior to this, the longest amount of time I'd done a bike tour, and I'll use quotes because it's it wasn't much of a tour. It was four days from San Francisco back to L.A. or back to my house in Thousand wow. Oaks. So we did. I did four hundred and I think it was four hundred and sixty miles, and okay. I did that in four days. Okay. And um, the joke constantly is, well, you didn't finish it by yourself because um, my now wife, then girlfriend met me and took my panniers so I could finish the ride in one day. Cause I rode from San, I rode from San Luis Obispo back to my house, which was 187 miles. Wow. But being fully bagged out for three days and doing hundred right. miles every day, I was kind of, you know, spent. Yep. And I, the problem is riding North to South. I knew how close I was to my house if I was yep. on a road bike and I'm like, I can make it home. I don't need to stop in Santa Barbara. Exactly. You know, I left San Luis Obispo at eight and I got home at 1 a.m. <laughs> It was, it was oh gnarly. Oh my gosh. So I rode in the dark for most of it because it was late September. So the sun started right. setting earlier. Um, <laughs> so, you know, that was 2016, but now I'm like, oh, it's 2018. I just did the SMMT, killed it. You know, I was in first place for that thing for like two days. And then the real runners beat the crap out of me because my right. run times were awful. Right. I'm running like 12 minute miles in the trails. It's not impressive at all. Um, so I get the route together. I'm like, I can do this. Um, Sammy is no, there's no way, there's no way. And then, um, my now wife, you know, she's like, we no, Sammy's going to go with you. I'm like, yeah, right. She's like, I'll talk to him. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, you know, Sammy and her have a great relationship and you know, she would just go, Sammy, you should go on this ride. He's like, I'm not going, I'm not going literally maybe, maybe a month and a half before we were supposed to go. Sammy's like, okay, I'll go. Really? Yeah. Meanwhile, like... What kind of training was he doing? He was training on the ride. That's the joke. That was like the joke that Hector from Franco was like, oh, he's not training. He's training on the ride. You got to be kidding me. No, but this goes back to my story right. earlier where he's like got this half Asian Holy. thing, thing like <laughs> where he can just do stuff. Wow. It's like there's some like... I don't know what it is. You, you yeah. mix a, an Asian person with a, an Anglo <laughs> or a white person and all of a sudden you have this like superhuman. I don't know how it is. It's like... There's got to be it, a study done on it's this. It's amazing. It's incredible. Like That's, I've known a few I, yeah, people. I mean, like I thought that. for sure you guys were training hard. I for was, this. I was, but that's he was me. Not. No, no. Wow. He, of course he wouldn't. Even if he was training, he's like, I'm just going to ride my bike. I just need to get saddle time. I'm just going to make sure that's okay. If everything, if that works, then I'm fine. Unbelievable. So yeah, I was training, and I talked to um, Scott Searway, who yep. you know, yep. and he was like, all right, I'm going to get you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to get you like some, some interval program. And I'm like, I'm not doing intervals, dude. There's, <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm just going to ride my bike. He's like, just try it. Right. So I always was giving him crap. I'm like, intervals are dumb. I don't want to do them. They, you know, it's like, I just want to ride and have fun. Yeah. Well, he got me on this little, he was making me a program essentially, just trying to help me out. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I'm like, I like intervals. This is fun because it becomes a game. Yeah, it's exactly. A, it's a number game and it's also a fitness game and, you beat the crap out of yourself, but at the end of the day, you feel amazing. You get right. the, like that runner's high. You get yeah. the same euphoric feeling. So I was like, all right, cool. I like this. And then we started doing these. I want to say I started doing those in August of last year. So August, okay. 2018. And I was going crazy with them. I went hard for, I don't know, probably till February. Okay. And I was going crazy to the point where I had an indoor trainer. Because wow. we had real rain in California yeah, this year. Exactly. So it was raining like crazy and... I got a trainer and I was on the trainer in the garage doing two hour sessions. And I'm like, it is what it is. I want to be ready for this. Right. The last thing I want is my fitness to fall through my ass and not me not be able to finish. <laughs> right. Right. So, um, I'm doing all this training and then Sammy says he's going to do it. And then people are like watching, you know, yin and yang, essentially I'm doing all this stuff. And Sammy's just like, nothing, whatever. We'll get, we'll do it. It's fine. I'll show up and just, yeah. Yeah. But granted, I mean the guy, he's in shape. He yeah. surfs. He does all this stuff. It's just not bike time. Right. Right. Um, but he has the muscle memory and all that stuff. Maybe. I don't know. You could probably yeah, no, say that, yes that's, or no. I don't know. It's still shocking. And that blows me away. Um, nutrition wise, what were you, were you doing any kind of program, you know, preparing yourself uh, um, okay. for so, that? Yeah. Yeah, I was. I was, it wasn't a strict diet. Um, I would m just make sure I was eating enough before the ride so I wouldn't bonk. Cause right. when you're doing intervals, it's a whole different game. You're actually, 
you know, putting out a ton of energy. Yep. It's not like these long sustained rides that we're used to, or I'm used to at least. So I was eating enough. Um, but then prior to the ride, like I was eating super clean. Like okay. I was eating as much like vegetable protein as I could and like not eating a lot of meat. I was, the cheeseburger would be the extent of my red meat. Right. And that was like once in a blue moon at that point. Okay. Um, and I was just, you know, but then it started making me a little concerned because I'm like, Oh wait, we're riding across America and in the middle of this country, <laughs> it's meat and potatoes. Like, you know, just thinking, okay, that's what the stereotype is. So a month before the rise, so in April, I just said, I'm not dieting anymore or eating clean. I don't care. I'm going to eat junk food because okay. I had to get my stomach ready yeah, for what exactly. I was going to do. That's right. Because I knew a majority of the food was going to come in the middle of the ride from gas stations yep. and whatever restaurants we could find. Like, you know, I was trying to stay away from as many fast food restaurants as possible. Right. And so I just started eating junk and I was like, you know what? I could afford to gain some weight anyway, just cause sure. I, I plan on burning a ton. Right. And we just, yeah. So the diet I had went out. Okay. Completely. Uh, what was your body weight when you started riding the day one? Do you remember? Day one, it was probably 200. Okay. So six, four, 200 pounds. Okay. Still thinner for a 200 or yeah, six, four absolutely. person. But. Absolutely. Um, and Sammy's like five, eight, five, nine. Yeah. What's he weigh? Would you guess? maybe 150. Okay. He's fit. He's yeah, just a fit exactly. Dude. He's all right. muscle. Um, so you guys decided to roll out, uh, well, you, you start in Santa Monica. I started Santa Monica on May 19th. Okay. In rain. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. And how did you determine the route? So the whole goal, the original route, I had us going from Santa Monica to Barstow in one day. And, I was like, it's possible, but that's, that's 150 miles in one day. That's a right. lot. That's that a is. lot. Yeah. And it's a lot of elevation too. Okay. Once you get to get up to that, you know, the high desert area. Right. It's at least 5,000 feet of elevation gain. Yeah. So I was on a bike with Scott Searway again. Yep. And he's like, you know, I want to roll with you guys for at least a few days, but I can't leave on Sunday. I can only leave Monday. And I'm like, well, all right. So I'm going to leave Sunday and you can just like meet us and like, we'll split the ride. We'll meet in Palmdale or something like that. Okay. So the first day we actually rode from Santa Monica to Palmdale. Okay. And that was mentally, well, I wouldn't say mentally, but it was, it was grueling. It was like mentally grueling physically. It was like whatever, hmm. but you're right. It was slower than slow because you ride from Santa Monica pier up ocean. Yep. Up, um, San Vicente link up to Wilshire. No, no link up to Sepulveda. Then you got to go up Sepulveda Pass. Oh then you got to go through the valley, and then you go up Old Road in uh, in um, Valencia. Okay. And then we cut over to the bike path and ended up doing the climb that they did in the Tour of California the day before we were there. Oh wow! We actually rode up that and then ended up out in Palmdale. Okay. So that was the first day, and it was eighty miles and about fifty five hundred feet of climbing. Huh. Fully bagged out. <laughs> with like you know 25 pounds of gear on a 20 pound bike wow so all right so what gear are you bringing uh so we ran ortlieb um bike packing bags okay and uh it was one saddle bag um i forget the leader amount on them it was enough to fit um my shoes a change of street clothes and an extra bib an extra jersey couple of pairs of socks and my Patagonia down jacket, which is pretty compacting. Right. You know, so you could smash all this stuff in the bag and they're actually compression bags too. So you okay. can pull the plug on them and roll oh, wow. really tight and then plug them back up. So that was off the back. Uh, the triangle bag was a three liter, um, water bladder. Okay. With, uh, as many snacks as I could fit in there and two bottles of these nuts. Okay. Cause chamois is important. Yep. <laughs> and then, uh, the front I had, um, it's like a bedroll bag where you can stuff it from both sides, but it's fully waterproof and you can close it up. I had two bags of, um, scratch hydration okay, and random miscellaneous bike stuff and a gallon bag of spare tubes. Cause I Got was it. not going to leave without at least four or uh, five tubes. Oh yeah. Um, 
patch kits can do wonders, but right. if they don't work, you're not riding, and that sucks. Absolutely. So This is crazy when you think yeah. about, I mean, you guys are literally just taking anything that can fit, and no trailer, no vehicle, mm-hmm. no just... Now, did you know along the way if there are bike shops or... Well... Had you mapped that out? So, um... Adventure Cycling does a great job with their maps. Okay. And if the maps tend to be outdated, they give you supplemental um, mm. language that comes with them. So they tell you, okay, this town has a bike shop. Okay. This town has that. Um, there's a town of population of 100. They have nothing but maybe a gas station, one restaurant that might not be open. Right. Or, you know, your local watering yep. hole that doesn't serve food. Yep. Um, so there was a lot of that. So... No, I just kind of trusted the maps because they're they're pretty good. I mean, a lot of people okay. utilize those maps, sure. especially for the Trans America Trail. Right, um, that's what they rely on. Right, and got it. Then they're pretty dialed in. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, all right, so you go um, Palmdale. You get to Barstow. We go to Barstow. So Scott Medicine Palmdale, okay. and then we rode to Barstow, Barstow, which was another eighty mile day. Okay. Which is, you know, now I'm looking at it, it wasn't that much, yeah, but like, yeah, 80 miles, a couple hundred, a couple thousand feet of climbing. Okay. And then we got to Barstow. Yeah. All right. Uh, on average, what were you guys averaging per day? Mileage? Mileage. Um, if, for the whole ride, we were doing anywhere from 115 to 125 a day. Okay. And that was average though. That was average. there were some days that were lower than that. Sure. Some days that were way how higher. Much, how much climbing? Um, Average was probably anywhere from four to six thousand feet. Okay. People say this country's flat, but there's hills that don't stop, <laughs> like rolling hills that do not stop. Really? Oh, it's it was a joke. I was just, we just laugh. Yeah. Because you get to these rollers, you're like, oh my god, there's another one. <laughs> there's another one. We get over the horizon. There's a downhill because like that's what we're used to in California. Yeah, we exactly. Have Santa Monica Mountains. You go do uh, like Decker or Ensignal, you know you get to the crest, and guess right. what? There's a downhill on the other side, exactly. and there's the ocean. Yep. There's no ocean in the middle of the country. There's yeah. no mountains. No. There's hills. I was, uh, you know, I'm, I'm following this on Insta, and I'm following on the stories, and I'm all in. I'm like, all right, this is really cool, until you guys get to Oklahoma and tornadoes. Oh. I'm like, <laughs> okay, now, guys, this, then now it's a dumb idea. This yeah. This was a dumb idea. What? All right, first off, before we get there, yeah. what was the plan in terms of sleeping? Were you sleeping? We were we had goals to get to um, hotels every night. Okay, we we had to get to specific towns every night. Okay, because we were in a time crunch. Got it. As stupid as that sounds, right? You know, we have real lives outside of sure. just pretending to be a yeah. cyclist and pretending to be really <laughs> right. cool adventure guys, yeah. which Sammy is. I'm definitely not. I'm right. boring as all can be. <laughs> um, but yeah, he had to get back for a job, which he's on as we're recording now in Italy. And okay. I just had to get back because, you know, I was lucky enough to get four weeks off of sure. work and not get in trouble, essentially. Yeah. Um, so we just had a time crunch. Okay. And it was just like, too bad. You have to do it. Yep. You which know. probably was a, in the long run, probably what saved a lot of this is. Oh, like, yeah. hundred percent. Like, you know, we have to go. Yeah. Like there, there's no option of well let's just kick it here right so yeah. there was maybe a couple of days where we probably could have done that if we had the time okay um when like this section you're talking about so we rode from amarillo texas to sayer oklahoma okay and that day we did i, I want to say it was like 135 miles but it was 90 degrees out all day and it was like 95 percent humidity oh my god so we knew there was something brewing because it was just so humid that you're bound for some sort of storm. Right. And we didn't hit rain at all that day. And we we get done with the ride, and it, it was like a crawl across the finish line. That was by far the hardest day we had. Really? And it was just because you ride from Amarillo, pretty much outside of Albuquerque to Amarillo is flat. Okay. It's downhill to flat, and then outside of Amarillo... 80 miles is flat. And all of a sudden you start hitting these rollers. Okay. And these rollers, like when you're riding in this section, we're parallel with uh, interstate 40. And these are the old, um, there's service roads. Essentially it's old route 66. They yeah. just made service road for the farms. Okay. And you see route 66 pitch up or you see I 40 pitch up maybe six or 8%, but the roads we're on are going up like 12% or 14%. Oh my God. They're spiking way quicker and shooting down. And it's just like a roller coaster. 
and those things, you know, just imagine just trying right. to expel all your burst speed on a real quick kicker. Wow. Yeah, like the climb, yeah. yeah, going up yeah. through Decker. You exactly. know exactly what I'm talking yeah. about. Oh, it's absolutely. Just, and it's a nightmare. And it was just wow. It was just yeah. Grueling. Would have never guessed they'd be something that steep out there. Yeah, and then you think you get over it. I mean, they were quick though. It was just quick sure. pedals. But when you're doing it for a hundred miles you're, or whatever the mileage was at that point, right. you're, you're toast. And we're already a week in at that point, maybe more, and you know, back to back riding. So that night we uh, get to a hotel. The only thing to eat uh, is a Denny's across the street um, in a pilot um, truck stop. Phenomenal Denny's, great <laughs> cheeseburgers. But after 140 miles or whatever the mileage was that day, which anything would taste good. Yep. Um, so we're in there talking about the route, and the waiter's asking us, and I'm trying to figure out the next day where we're going, just on the map, just looking for you know landmarks or whatever. And the lady behind us goes, you know, I don't want to be rude, but you know, you're in tornado country. And the area you guys are going in is called Tornado Alley. Like oh. pretty much all I-40 is Tornado Alley. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm from California. I know like earthquakes. I yep. know like a day of rain. Yep. That's, I don't know anything about weather. Like I don't, I don't know anything about this stuff. I'd been in a hurricane in Florida one time and I just thought it was cool. Like people's houses are getting destroyed. Yeah. I'm sitting there going, this is awesome. Yeah. yeah. I went through nope. Northridge earthquake. That just came out of nowhere. So I don't know. Yeah. Exactly. You know, whatever. So. She goes, yeah, so you guys should really just be careful. And I'm like, well, how do we know if a a tornado's coming? She goes, so if the clouds start doing these like wavy things and they're really dark and there's kind of like this haze below them, you need to find coverage or you need to get get protection somewhere. I was like, so what's protection? An underpass of like a freeway? She's like, no, No. do not (laughs) go there. You'll get sucked out. And I was like... Wow, I'm glad this lady interrupted the dinner conversation yep. because I was like, "Oh yeah, underpass, totally sure. fine." And um, yeah, it's not an earthquake, and you yeah. want to just protect your head. But that's California yeah, mentality, exactly. right? Yeah, as stupid as it sounds, no, it's true. true. Yeah. So she goes, "No, you got to find these ditches that are running parallel to most of the roads you're riding, and just lay flat in them." And I was like, "Cool, got right. it." So like the next day, we're riding, and I'm like looking over, I'm like, "There's a ditch. All right, we're good," <laughs> because that day. Um, we were riding and I have, uh, my Apple watch on and I keep on getting these alerts from, uh, weather channel going, Hey dude, no, I didn't say dude, but I yeah. say dude, They're like, Hey, uh, weather, you know, hurricane or hurricane tornadoes in your, in your vicinity, storms are brewing. Yep. And I'm like, dude, a storm, like, come on, we don't have a storm. So we get to this gas station. Um, we're like 40 miles outside of, of Oklahoma city. Okay. And, we're in the gas station and this guy walks up to us and goes, which way are you guys headed? Est, uh, west or East? And I'm like, we're going East. He goes, you better not go East. And I'm like, why? He goes right here. You're at the edge of the dry line, which means tornado is not going to come through here. There's some, I don't know how it works, okay. but the storm's going to stop somewhere over there and it's not going to get you. Oh my gosh. And I'm like, Oh, he goes, yeah, you don't want to mess around with those. I goes, I know, and he goes, where are you boys from? I'm like, from California. He goes, oh, liberals, great. And I'm like, <laughs> like I'm sitting here going, dude, don't, don't just stereotype us right. with like what you see on TV as right. like the regular California people. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, he started telling us all about tornadoes and all this stuff. And I'm like, all right. So we're like, all right, how are we going to get around this? Like, we can't. We don't want to stop here because we're going to be stuck here for two days because yep. we started looking at the weather and there was a huge storm up in Tulsa, which is, you know, northeast of Oklahoma City. So that storm was going to come in. We were going to lose two days and we were going to be stuck in a town of like 5,000 people with like nothing to do. I just didn't right. want to be stuck in a hotel. So we're like, you know what? Screw it. We're going to hitchhike. We're just going to hitchhike this section. Wow. So we go to this gas station and we're just talking to people and this guy comes up to us and goes, Oh, which way are you guys headed? And we're like, we're going East. He just started laughing. I guess this is like a joke. Everyone was in on, but us. So he goes, he goes, you guys weren't in Flagstaff like five days ago. Were you? And we're like, or six days ago. I'm like, Oh yeah, we actually were. He goes, I saw you guys riding. You guys no are crazy. Way. I'm like, what? And he goes, yeah, I thought you were awesome. My wife thought you guys were idiots. Cause you're riding in snow through Flagstaff I've never seen that. Yeah, on the highway because there's no there's yeah. no route around it yep. so I just thought that was funny and he goes well good luck to you guys and just walked away and I'm like alright cool <laughs> so some other guy you know early 30s around, like, came over he goes I heard your conversation where are you guys headed we're like oh we're trying to get to Oklahoma City 
for some reason, I kept on saying Kansas City. I don't right. know why. But Sammy's like, no, dude, we're going to Oklahoma City. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> Oklahoma City. And the guy was like, yeah, not a good idea. You guys should just stay here. I'm like, well, where are you headed? He goes, um, I'm going to El Rio, right where they had, I think it's El Rio. It's, they just had a tornado like two days before that. Wow. And like people were killed and they destroyed like a hotel and all this other stuff. And I'm like, oh, well, you want to give us a ride out that way so we can just like at least get past the storm because it right. was about to hit and like then we can just ride in because Oklahoma the storm was staying north of the highway we were kind of going south okay west, uh, southeast so he kind of he's like uh, yeah fuck it I'll give you a ride I'm like all right cool dude wow. we're going we're going so we threw the bikes in the back of the truck and then he ended up driving us like all the way really to Oklahoma City and I was like Awesome, dude. Like, That's thank so you. cool. And he was so stoked on our ride. He was calling his friends in the car like, yo, guys, I'm in the car with these guys. They're, right, they're from California. They're riding across America. Oh, they're already here. I was like, dude, these people are legit, dude. That these is people so are cool. so, like, that is so warm cool. and yeah. cool. Um, yeah. Long story short, we get to Oklahoma, and we're watching the news that night, and that storm rolled right through the route we were supposed to be on. Really? We were, it was knocking over 18-wheelers. Like, oh, just, my god! It showed pictures. Like, we were... You know, we were in Oklahoma. They were, the storm passed like 20 miles north or west of us. The pictures they were showing, it looked like it was nighttime where where we were. It yep. was just like normal gray. Yep. Every, you know, it's June, June gloom for us, right? Yep. And tractor trailers flipped over everywhere. I'm like, dude, I'm so lucky. We're so lucky we didn't go. Unbelievable. Yeah. So I'm from Chicago area. Okay. So I grew up with tornadoes. Yeah. So that's why when I'm watching the Instagram and I'm like, you guys are crazy. Like, no, this is not going to work. Yeah. And so to hear this side of it, that's insane. Yeah. I would have been home by now. That was, yeah. it was, it was funny. But at the same point, I was like, we've already hit enough hiccups so far. Right. I don't want to keep on doing this. Yeah. So were like, you, by the way, were you expecting that snow in Flagstaff? Um, Kind of. Because I loved the uh, snow getup that, with the bags. Oh, you like that? Yeah. That was good, right? Yeah. That was, that, yeah. That was, uh, that was ghetto. Ingenuity right there. Yeah, that was good. Um, they put plastic bags on, <laughs> on their uh, socks on, plastic bag, and then inside the shoe. No, we did. We did. Sock, plastic bag, additional socks. Oh, then in the shoe. Okay. And then Sammy was stuffing bags in his bib because That's, that. he, he gets cold quick, I guess. Right. And he wanted to be really, really warm and rather sweat and get hot than be oh cold. Oh, my gosh. But it was cold. Oh, yeah. It was miserable. Like, I remember that night we were in, we were in Scott was with us that, still at that point. Okay. We were in Seligman, Arizona, which is um, northeast on 40, f- about 50 miles from uh, Kingman. Okay. So we're out there. And, like, we knew there was snow coming. Right. But it said flurries. I'm like, oh, flurries. Again, I've, I've California seen, boy. I've seen snow flurries. <laughs> I've been in New York a couple times right. where they've had snow flurries. And I'm like, this is cool. It's snow. I'm like, yeah. no, it's snow flurries. It doesn't stick. Yeah. So we wake up that morning, and there's snow on the ground. I'm like, oh, man, that's totally not snow flurries. It's stuck. <laughs> that, that's snowballs. And we had to ride 18 miles and just to get to the, like, you know, 18 miles off running parallel with the right. highway and it was gnarly. It was so much snow everywhere. Oh my god. And we're riding. Sam and I are riding and it's like, oh yeah, cool. Scott had taken off because he was getting cold and he just had to keep on pedaling. I'm right. like, all right, just go, dude. We'll catch you. Yep. Or whatever. There was a guy walking, like a hobo, just straight up walking down this road, frozen, really? trying to get to Seligman. I'm like, dude, you got hit with some real stuff. Wow. So that guy was way crazier than us because yeah, he was on clearly. foot and like in canvas shoes walking. Oh my gosh. So yeah, we, but we rode, we did that whole route that day and it was just like slow motion because it was, it got so cold and our, our hands were numb and I mean, that was the coldest I'd ever read. Right. And like we've had, we have cold mornings in California. Yeah, but exactly. Not, not like that. Not like that. I yeah. mean, to be cold and then soaking wet on right. top of it. And then you get finally get over the uh, Arizona divide and right. it's even colder up there. And there's at that point, the storm had passed, but the wind was blowing through. Oh, just your bones. Oh, it, yeah. it was awful. Yeah. It's terrible. It was awful. But Man. I, you know, that night I went to bed with every warm piece of clothing I had because right. I just didn't want to get a fever and like get sick. Exactly. So yeah, yeah. But we survived. It was cool. Um, all right. Along the way, this is the other part that fascinated me with uh, with your story. Is I was watching 
uh, what you guys were consuming. Now, you know, on this podcast, we, uh, one of the things I try to do in my fitness industry or in my fitness career within the industry is I dispel a lot of myths. Okay. And one of the big ones is nutrition, unfortunately, that we have to, as personal trainers, we have to deal with. And a lot of people are, uh, with the goal of body fat loss or weight loss, want to call it. There's just a ton of books written um, with not enough science to back it up, but they claim that there is. And they're blaming carbs as our problem. They're blaming sugar as our problem. They're, you know, don't eat this, don't eat that. And one of the things myself, and I'm going to say those in the know within the industry, have been saying all along, it's all about calories in, calories out. You know, if you're going to eat X amount of calories, you better move X amount. And then people will say, well, okay, Mike, you can say that because you exercise a lot. They say, okay, but think about what you're saying. Is So if I exercise, I get to eat more than you do. So then if I exercise less, then therefore I, I just eat less. Right. And so, you know, you, Mary Smith, you sit at a desk all day, don't eat as much as I do, but don't sit and blame food groups. And I'm just spinning my wheels. I mean, people are like, okay, whatever, whatever, whatever. And they'll keep trying whatever they're doing. So now, lo and behold, I'm, I'm following you guys because I'm a, a bike nut. And I'm watching what you guys are eating. And I'm just cracking up. This is just flipping awesome. And the, the thing, the, the day that I knew this needs to be talked about is Sammy had a bag set up on his handlebars. What was the bag for? Um I think we both did this, but Sammy executed extremely better than I did. Oh, it was uh, great. Because he's also like, you know, he has the, the photographic eye that just, right. the stories, you're like not the only person okay. who's brought this up. Okay. A lot of people have been like, oh, my favorite part of the ride every morning was looking at what was in Sammy's snack bag. Because yep. he would do this like, you know, pan over on the story on Instagram and just show like whatever the snack of the day was. Exactly. Um so the company that I purchased my bike bags from was Ortlib, but okay. um, Roadrunner Bags is okay. a company out of LA. Great company. They make a bag called a Copilot. Okay. And um, I straight up bought it for snacks. Okay. So I was like, I need something quick, yep. you know, that I can just fit a ton of crap into. Right. And then pull yeah. out. And, and it just literally eat. just sits on your handlebars. Yeah, it straps on to the inside of the cockpit and okay. ties on to the stem and the bars. Perfect. And then the, the head tube. Yep. So we would stuff whatever we felt like, you know, eating. Right. And I'm assuming like, you know. Like steamed broccoli. Oh, of and, course. And boiled right? chicken. And more like and... whatever a stoner would consume if, you know, he just <laughs> took a fat raging hit and wanted to go into a liquor store and buy junk food. Right. Um, so we, it was, in the beginning was rough because we didn't know what we needed. Right. Right. So we're like, okay, well, what would athletes do? Beef sticks, um, protein, high protein, high yep. protein. Um, and then finally it just turned into, no, dude, I want to eat this and I don't care. Exactly. So the joke with Sammy to me, he's like, dude, I've never seen someone consume as much Skittles as you consume ever. <laughs> Cause I would eat Skittles. To, like we'd have breakfast. I'm packing up. Like we'd go eat breakfast real quick at the hotel or out like, you know, whatever fine golden arches establishment that was outside right you know, mcdonald's mcgriddles yep great pre-ride snack <laughs> phenomenal their coffee is like crack it gets the motor going real quick oh i'm sure so we'd consume that and i'd go in i'd pack all my stuff put my bib on put my my base layer on before i put my jersey on i'm just pounding skittles that i found at the bottom of my snack bag from oh the day before gosh. and that was a constant it was like every day really um yeah so like sammy was like you know he had his snack bag i had a snack bag and he's like i'm out of snacks we're stopping that's how we kind of gauged okay our ride so the night before <laughs> we awesome. the night before we'd go to the gas station or liquor store whatever we could right. find grocery store we'd buy a gallon of water a piece fill okay. up our bladders fill up our we had a bladder it was around three liters. Both of us had that. And we both had um, just, you know, 20 ounce water bottles, yep. which we'd put our mixes in. Okay. Uh, I used scratch. He used, I forget what he used, but it doesn't matter. Okay. That's what the bottle was for. Cause that thing got disgusting because we only had so many cleaning, right. Uh, you know, ways to clean it. Um, so we'd go through the, you know, I'd go right to the candy aisle, <laughs> get Snickers or Skittles or um, those fruit pies that, no one ever buys. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, so that was, that would st pack them with that. 
and then we'd go back and then we'd ride about 30, maybe 40 miles and then have to stop. Stop was for me at least was always a chocolate milk followed by a can of Coke or Dr. Pepper. And then I would nurse a Gatorade and we would just hang out for like 15 minutes. I that was this. always the go-to. And then I would buy beef jerky or, you know, buy the handfuls and, it was always the Slim Jim sticks. Yep. It was never like the full sheets because it just wasn't... The highly processed Slim Jim. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Snack into it or we snap, into a Slim Jim. We were Jim. snapping yeah. into them like exactly. no one's business. Um, but see, this is, where, this is where the intelligence on Sammy's end is like significantly higher than mine. He pre-opened all his snacks. So he was consuming like right away and I'm sitting right. there going like on the bike trying to like, like hang on. I'm swerving all over the place trying to open them, like <laughs> breaking my teeth while I'm trying to tear it open with my mouth. Um but finally I kind of caught on. Um, so yeah, that was that stop. And then lunch, we always tried to find like a local place that was okay. like a local diner sure. or local restaurant via Yelp or right. Google review or whatever. And again, to know. get your clean eating of the steamed broccoli and yeah, boiled again. chicken. And- so the go-to was either breakfast food, which was going to be, you know, in the middle of the country, like three eggs in California is like six eggs. There, like they give yeah. so many such big portions. Um, some sort of pancake or French toast, and a lot of potatoes, a lot of hash browns, a lot of it, a lot of cheese. Yeah, um, a lot of spinach, either, a lot of carrots. Well, we did get some greens in, so okay, we figured out that club sandwiches work really well. So we got some. Sammy doesn't eat tomato. But he would get his no no tomato. I would get my tomato. Okay. And then with a little bit of lettuce. So we were dialed in. <laughs> that was it. Processed cold cuts, some wilted lettuce, uh, a kind of red tomato. Right. And then, uh, you know, the finest Wonder Bread we can find. I was going to say the, the whole grain, nine grain bread. And, yeah. Known so, as Wonder Bread. Anything the best. to fill us up. <laughs> Absolutely. Um did you feel the and and I with that bag? I know Sammy found donuts at some point. Oh yeah, donuts were key. Yeah, donuts were awesome. Unbelievable. You get the sleeve of six donuts. <laughs> Got to go chocolate though. Always chocolate, right? Because it disguises the stale taste. Okay. Because <laughs> most of the stuff, you know, it's like right. blowing the dust off of it. Actually, no, you don't blow the dust off of it. Gas stations. No, people, I don't know what people do in there. They go ransack those places. Did uh, energy wise, did you feel a lack of energy from the nutrition that you were consuming? The only time I felt that is when we were in Amarillo. We went to the Big Texan, which okay. is a really famous uh, steakhouse where they have that eating contest where you eat a 72 oh, yeah. steak. It's all right. over Travel Channel, whatever. It's like Disneyland in there. It's insane. Okay. It's so cool. Um, I, you know, I'm not going to do the 72 ounce challenge because I'm just not feeling that for the next day but you know i'll go to the 16 ounce ribeye wow ate that thing and i'll tell you the next day, that's the day we had like the hardest ride ever right that steak did not help <laughs> no I, it was like lethargic at that point i could not function isn't that amazing so i was like I, i'm not eating steak anymore for yep. the remainder of this ride <laughs> cheeseburger that's not a steak right that's some like processed ground beef stuff of some sort i can yeah. eat that but not not a steak that's amazing yeah it's the only time i really felt um, Bad. all right. So all in all, you got, uh, 28 days, 28 days. Yeah. Uh, any day off? We had one day off because of the gnarly tornadoes okay. in, um, Oklahoma. Okay. What'd you do that day? Went and saw, um, book smart, which is hilarious. It's a, it's a movie. It's like, they, they, they say it's like the, uh, the girl super bad. Okay. Version super bad. Okay. So. But then I was like, oh, it's filmed in California. Man, California is awesome. I want to go home. <laughs> but then I got out of the movie and like, nah, I got to finish the ride. Exactly. But yeah. that was, you know, it wasn't a bad place to be stuck um, because hockey playoffs were going on at the time. Oh, that's and cool. And Sammy and I are both like hockey fanatics. So at that point, the Stanley Cup was going. So I was like, all right. Very cool. Go St. Louis because I don't want to see Boston win anything else. They've won too many championships right. <laughs> in the last few years. Um, so, yeah, we were just watching those games and then um, – Got to see where the Dodgers have their AAA team. Oh, that's phenomenal cool. Phenomenal baseball stadium. Really? Yeah. Mickey Mantle's from there, so they have a lot of they have oh, a Mickey Mantle so restaurant cool. and then you know, big statue of Mickey Mantle in front. That's so cool. Um, but yeah, that was cool. That's awesome. So twenty eight days, how many uh, uh, how many miles total? It's three thousand plus. I, I okay. don't know the exact number. All right. And then do you know like how many uh, feet of climbing elevation? It was over a hundred thousand. Wow. Yeah. 
That I know because I it, it was I had to add that up. That was my flat mileage doesn't impress me. Right, climbing is like oh, t- that's know. amazing. Yeah. yeah was, In comparison, I don't know if you know, but Jonathan, you may know what's uh, the Tour de France where they cover uh, elevation. Tour de France, I think, does a little bit more uh, in elevation. It's, it's just over. I think it's over a hundred thousand. Wow. So it's, it's not far. No, they only do twenty. Far. They do twenty two hundred feet. Oh, twenty two. Twenty two days. Oh, yeah. What they, and they do about 2,300 miles. Three weeks, 21, 21 days. Yeah. yeah. And 22, 2,300 miles. Right. Which is, I mean, but they're at race pace. Yeah, exactly. That's or, the other thing. Yeah. But that was one thing I did notice. So every day towards the end, for sure, we, we just started to get slower. We were tired. Sure. Um, but we never, never did a century that was over eight hours. Every century we did okay. was sub eight hours. So I was happy with that. That's that's, cool. that's, that's riding time. That's yeah. not stopping and all yeah, that yeah. stuff. But that I was like, if we're keeping that pace, right. we're dialed in. Yeah. Whatever we're doing, don't fix it because it's not broken. Just right. keep on going. So uh, every day it was, it was a sub eight hour century. Wow. Whether or not we went another forty sure. miles was a different story. Right, exactly. So Yeah. What did um do you know what your scale weight was when you got home when you finished in uh New York? When I finished in New York, I, I was close to like it was maybe one. I was one ninety six. I didn't really lose that much weight. I okay. weighed myself like two days ago. I was one ninety five. Okay. Because I think my body's still like recovering. Oh yeah. Because we only finished a week ago. Yeah. So I'm still, you know, and that was the funny thing. Like the only thing I wanted to eat when I got home was green food. Like just give me plants. I don't yeah. want to eat anything. Like isn't that amazing? And I wanted I wanted green food and, and Mexican food. That's the only thing. Wow. I, wanted. <laughs> I was That's... like everything else I don't care about. Right. Had enough pizza when I was in New York. I don't need pizza right now. I need Mexican food and green. It's just amazing when, you know, you, the, I'm trying to get my thoughts here, but the, the amount of food you consumed, the type of food you consumed, and you come back uh, roughly six pounds less. Yeah. And, um, it just goes to show all about movement and, burning off the calories. You can eat whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Obviously you wouldn't eat as, you know, this is where people are going to get possibly confused, but you wouldn't have eaten as much of the crap had you not been on a bike for oh, eight hours. Yeah, absolutely not. You would have still eaten the same crap, yeah. but just not as much of it. Well, right. The thing was like, if it's like anyone that ever does a road trip, especially if you're, like, you're from here, like in this area, in this region of the world, if you're driving east, as soon as you get to Arizona, they have a thing called Cracker Barrel. Yeah. Cracker Barrel <laughs> yeah. is phenomenal. It is. They don't have those here. The no. rumor is they're building one in Camarillo. Oh, really? The rumor is over by the outlets. I don't know. You know, wow. I see the newspaper reporting it, so maybe there's some truth to it. But when you're on a road trip, you're like, oh, yeah, Cracker Barrel. Yep. Fried food. Absolutely. You know, wholesome, good old Southern cooking. When you're eating that every day, it sucks. Yeah. It was just like, it just becomes like, redundancy and it's like dude i cannot keep on eating this stuff let's yep. try to change it up like i remember one day we were in ohio and we ate back to back at cracker barrels because we were just in the hotel parking lot and i'm like dude i, I don't want to eat this stuff and i would just you know look around and go how do people eat like this all the time and i don't think yep. cracker Barrel really defines the majority of the country but sure. it's like there's not a lot of green on those menus there's nope. not a lot of vegetables and it's nope. just like you know, come on, man. Like, yeah. Hard to find an avocado. Th- that doesn't exist. An avocado? what? <laughs> of a what? Of a what? Yeah. It's funny. I and saw they're also it. like $5 for one. Yeah. Out here they're a dollar. A uh, very close friend of mine um, posted on Instagram, uh, avocado season. And, you know, get them while they're hot and, you know, they can go with this and go with this. And I'm sitting here looking, avocado season. I'm like, I was just at the grocery store. They're either soft today or you buy them and tomorrow they're going to be ready to eat. That's year round. Like yeah. so, we are so spoiled. Oh, it's awful. I mean, I mean, it's awful ridic- in a good way. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. Yeah. You know, so I mean, we just we don't have that um, those seasons when it comes no, to that stuff. We don't. Well, you know, it's the funny thing. Just to talk about produce real quick and like grocery stores and that kind of stuff. That was like the number one thing my parents asked me. Like, oh, what'd you eat? Because my mom's like, oh, you must have eaten so much good food. I'm like, yeah, I did, but it was just it got old real quick. Right. Because my mom was a flight attendant for American Airlines okay. for 13 years. So she used to fly to States and she would book her, her travel or bid, her bid would be based on what she wanted to eat that month. 
So she's like, no I'm going to this town, way. I'm going to this. So she like would tell me like, That's oh, so this cool. area has this and there's yeah. this area has that. And I got home and I'm like, no, there, <laughs> I don't want to do this because I'm used to eating fresh vegetables and yep. all this kind of stuff and going to the grocery store going, this produce is awesome. And my mom just started laughing. She goes, when we, because they're from New York originally sure. and back, you know, when they moved here in the late seventies, you know, ref- I won't say refrigeration wasn't as good, but maybe, you know, getting produce to the East coast right. quickly was not as big of an option as it is now, but they would came to California and they're like, this is amazing. This is like the land of amazing yeah. produce. And yeah. I just was like, yeah, it's true. Exactly. I want yeah. good food. Yeah, absolutely. But so, those that are in the Midwest listening to this, you do not want to live here because we do not want to keep bringing a bunch of people here because it's not going to be good for us. So it's, it's horrible. <laughs> yeah, it's horrible to live here. The weather is horrible. Smart. Um, I mean, you, yeah, you walk outside, somebody smoking and it's just mm-hmm. like, I mean, you'll, you'll die. You, you don't want to live here. Forget, yeah. forget everything we were just talking about. Yeah. Everyone's superficial and fake. And oh, completely. everyone's an actor too. Yeah, absolutely. So they're really fake. Um, the people, what were the people like? The warmest people ever in the South. They were just, everyone was super cool. That's so cool. Um, you know, I don't want to get in depth on this, but. People bring up politics and uh, I'll say quote unquote political environment of the day. Um, you see the representation in the Midwest and they see the representation in California. Right. That stuff from what my personal experience was not like that at all. People were most of the time like, oh, you don't seem to be like the normal Californian. And I'm like, okay, I'm like nine tenths of the people that live there, but okay. Right. Um, but yeah, they're the warmest people in the world. They're super cool. They want to know all about you. They want to know yep. where you're going, why you're doing this, and all that stuff. Um, nothing like how the media pushes yeah. this, you know, exactly. red versus blue at yep. all. At all. Like yeah. The the normal people. Not yeah, like that exactly. Normal. And that's um, you know, we talk a lot about uh, on the podcast and it's what keeps me going in the fitness industry is the human connection. Mm-hmm. And that's what I enjoy most of what I do is being able to connect to people and then connecting people to people. And when you spend any time in the South or in the Midwest, anywhere outside mm-hmm. of, and you really can even say in the big cities, because anything outside of New York, anything outside of Los Angeles, um, you start migrating towards the middle and it's exactly that. They want to know your story. Yeah. Um, how does it jive with them? Um, and some of these people you'll meet and I mean, the connection you make, it's just incredible. Yeah. That, I mean, that was the, in the number one time it was either, I mean, this is the human contact we had. So it was gas station tenants. Yeah. Um, it was waitresses and waiters at restaurants. Um, that, that was the funniest stuff. Cause people would go, Oh, where'd you ride from? And you would tell them, I'm like today or like when I started, they're like, what do you mean when you started? I'm like, I rode from Santa Monica. I remember one time we were in, we were in Ohio. I think it was Ohio. And we were in the hometown of John Glenn, the astronaut. Okay. Got to see his, his, the house he grew up in. Oh, way cool. Um, and this guy was just blown away. He goes, what mile are you at? I'm like, today we're at mile 100. He's like, what? I'm like, yeah. He goes, how hard is that? I'm like, mentally, it's like every minute my mood changes, but physically yep. I'm fine. It's becoming like a routine. You know, I'm just like a well-oiled machine at this point. Um, so, you know, we tell the stories to them. Um, or, you know, we tell people like, cause we go to these restaurants, like perfect example of an establishment that we don't have here. It's a Ohio, Kentucky kind of thing. It's skyline chili. Okay. It's a, a place that's been there since I believe the forties. It was started by some Greek family that okay. made, you know, regular chili, but it has like these Greek flavors to it. Yep. It's amazing. So we, my buddy Dave goes, you need to go to skyline chili. All right cool. We'll go. So we get into Cincinnati and right across the street from the hotel is a skyline chili. And we're like, all right, let's go. So we sit down and we're looking at the menu and get a small, medium, large four by four way, three way. I'm like, I don't know what this means. Like, this is like, (laughs) it's like there's pictures, but it's like, this is like local jargon. I got, I'm going to figure this out. So our waiter comes up to us and goes, what do you guys want? I'm like, I've never been here. And he gives me these eyes. Like what, what do you mean? You've never been to skyline chili. And I'm like, Dude, I'm from California. And he goes, well, how hungry are you? I'm like, I'm super hungry. I just rode my bike here from like this. T- I rode, what did we go that day? We rode like 120 miles that day okay. from outside of Louisville to Cincinnati. Wow. 
So I think that was whatever. If it's yep. not, I apologize for not giving you the real facts, but we wrote a lot. That it was day. far. We finished yeah. in Cincinnati. That's what I know. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> we get there and then he just walked away. I'm like, dude, Sammy just walked away. Where's he going? And Sammy's like, I don't care where he's going. They have salad on the menu. There's greens. <laughs> I'm like, okay, cool. So he comes back and he gives us these little like, you know, dessert dishes with chili spaghetti. Now I've had chili spaghetti at Bob's Big Boy in Burbank. <laughs> so it's not like completely foreign to me. Okay. And but he gives it to us, goes, This is our world famous chili spaghetti. And I was like, dude, I'm all about this. There's so it's like, it's chili on spaghetti. It's like a bolognese. Okay. All right. But it's Midwest bolognese. Right. Okay. <laughs> Greek Midwest bolognese. Exactly. So we get this, uh, I try this and I'm like, dude, this rules. This is this is like this tastes like Greek pasticcio, like the meat inside oh my pasticcio, gosh. but it's in a chili. It has all these Greek flavors and it's spaghetti, which is like carbs. Right. I'll have this. Staying. And the guy goes, so you guys are really hungry? I'm like, yeah. So how do we order? He goes, I got you. I'm oh getting you guys God. both small spaghetti chili. I'm getting you guys one Coney dog, which is a chili dog. Okay. With mustard. And then I'm getting you a large crinkle cut chili fries. Oh my gosh. I'm like, Hell yeah, you're getting that for oh, us. Yeah. And then Sammy goes, in one salad. And the guy looked at him, and I'm like, <laughs> we need that salad. Trust me. And it was like their version of a Greek salad, which that was probably one of the better salads we right. had. Um, because the lettuce was, uh, wasn't was wilted iceberg. It was fresh iceberg. Right. And there was olives on it and oh, feta. Oh, my gosh. So that, like no joke, was delicious. And then he comes by and he goes, these are the desserts of the month. This is raspberry uh, cheesecake on a chocolate crust. I'm like, oh, bring it. Man. It's awesome. So, yeah, that was, and then he just was talking to us about the ride. And that was really most how these conversations so started. Cool. It was like the waiters yeah. or waitresses or people, and they'd be like, oh, wow, you guys are crazy. What are you doing this for? What are you raising money for? I'm like, I have a bucket list, and this just, just happens to be on it. Wow. And it's not like I don't want to raise money for awareness on something, right. but you know what? Everybody in the world has a cause right now, and it's like, what's the difference between my wanna be cause versus somebody else? Sure. It's like, yeah. If anyone asked me, like, oh, what are you doing? Like, it never happened, but like, if they wanted to donate money, go donate something that you wanna, exactly, you know, you believe in. Right. Because for me, I believe in this ride and finishing it. Right. I don't, you know, that's, that's that. amazing. So. Absolutely so cool. Well, um, yeah, I mean, the, uh, it, it still blows me away that you guys did it. And how'd you guys get back, by the way? Uh, American Airlines. <laughs> it was awesome. Five hours back, oh, 28 days out. It was, unbelievable. You're looking out the window, flying like over all this stuff you yep. rode over. I'm like, it's a joke, dude. That's, that's crazy. So, um, and now you're back to work. Back to work. Have you been on the bike? I have. It feels really weird. I would imagine. Um, there's no bags on it. Yeah. It feels like I'm riding on razor blades. And a, like an, an 80, or even a 40 mile ride is like useless. Well, that's what I did on Tuesday. I was like, <laughs> we're riding. Like for some reason I couldn't find my Garmin mount. And I'm like, okay, I got my snack bag. I'm just going to put that on the bike, <laughs> put my bike in there or put my Garmin in there, my wallet, my phone, you know, I'm rocking the t-shirt yeah. and the bib. I'm not, I don't care about cycling right. you know, kits. I don't want to wear a kit. I'm not cool. Right. Um, oh so my gosh. we're, uh, I like started riding and I just rode two miles down to Sprouts and Westlake to like meet people. And I'm like, dude, I'm starving. My body's like, Hey dude, you're on the bike. Go eat calories. <laughs> exactly. So I'm like, I want to go to calories. I'm going to go to Sprouts and go buy, buy some, <laughs> some, uh, those waffles and, oh, uh, yeah. what yeah. do you call it? A coconut water, chug the coconut water threw the waffles in the bag. And I said, let's go. And I didn't look at my Garmin the whole time. So I was like, Oh, okay, we'll go ride. I'm like, oh, 40 miles. I felt like five minutes. Isn't that amazing? I mean, if I can stay in that mindset yeah, the whole absolutely. time, I'm fine with it. Yeah. You know, my body's not going to react. Right. Because, you know, I'm not riding with bags on right now. We were doing, you know, 80 to 90 cadence the whole time, you know. Right. And, you know, now I'm back and I'm still keeping that cadence. So I'm like trying to like sprint up hills. And I'm like, right. dude, I can't do this right now. I have no burst speed at all. Yep. My, I'm just gassed. My muscles are like, dude, what are you doing? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, you literally have trained in a complete different environment yeah. for, for all that time. Yeah. So I think I'm going to have to get back in that interval. Yeah. Ugh. Talk about base miles. Oh, man. Yeah. We got yeah. some. You got we a got lot some of, at you this got point. Base. I mean, that, yeah. The best part was like the recovery. There, was, there wasn't there was any. It was hilarious. That's it's amazing. Like, 
we got to New York and we met some friends out there and they're like, Oh, you guys must be exhausted. You guys, you know, you want to relax. I'm like, no dude, we just want to go eat. <laughs> like we got, the whole thing was like, we, we got to New Jersey. Philly was good. Philly was great. Um, but you're in Philly, you want cheesesteaks. Right. So we went over to, um, what's the, I forget what they, it was Gino's and across the street is another one. Okay. I forget the name of it. Don't, don't shoot me. Yeah. We were like, all right, let's try both. So we got, <laughs> we got a Philly cheese, we got a Philly, what they call them cheesesteaks. They don't call them Philly cheesesteaks. So yep. they're in Philly. We got a cheesesteak <laughs> with provolone and then one with whiz, cheese whiz. So no way. Oh yeah. Oh, you got to get the whiz. Really? The whiz is the best way. It's so much better. It's, <laughs> it's like, I, yeah, you get one with whiz, one with provolone. We split both of them and then we go across the street and try another one. Oh my gosh. But you know, we get to New Jersey there's like a California Mexican place, like a Baja style All right. Mexican food. We're like civilization. We found it. We found green food and flavors. But then wow. we get to New York, and what's the first thing we do when we get to New York? Pizza. We go get Prince Street Pizza, yep. which is like they make the Sicilian style or grandma style pizza. Okay. Oh, we sat, Sammy sat in line. We sat in line with our bikes. Like we literally took the ferry from New Jersey over to New York, got off at Wall Street, rode up to Prince, which is like a mile ride through traffic, and we're like, we go, we're standing in line and, you know, we're in, uh, it's like Lower East Side, Little Italy area. Okay. And we're, we're in line. All these people are like, what are these guys doing with bikes, <laughs> full kits, helmets on still, not even taking the helmets off, right. like bags on the bikes. We're filthy. We're right. disgusting. Uh. And, um, we go in line and like, I had this whole setup in my head cause I was running uh, TT bars on my bike. Okay. Just to have another, sure. You know, point of contact for the handlebars not for arrow because there was yeah. nothing arrow about me on this entire ride right so i had like i had been there before i'm like i'm gonna just set my bike up against this specific tree like where they have like you know a little fence around it on the street and like yep. on the sidewalk and i'm like i'm gonna put my bike there and i'm gonna put my pizza box on that and i'm gonna eat this pizza there and sammy had to go in and i had to watch the bikes and someone got up from sitting on that little fence put the bikes there i had my whole table set up no sammy way comes out with the pizza First bite, I burned the crap out of my mouth. I burned the whole roof of my mouth because the pepperoni was just out of the oven. I'm like, it's so worth it. And yep. I, I cons- we ate two pizzas and then. Wow. Just, yeah. And then, yeah, that was the coolest thing. That is awesome. That's that so was, cool. That was the joke. Anyone asked us, why are you riding to New York? We want pizza. Yep. That's the only reason we're going. <laughs> you know, you could have flown. Yeah. No. No, no. Flying could have earned it. Yeah, yeah. it's boring. Yeah. Well, very cool. Thank you uh, for telling me the story. And uh, one day we'll have Sammy here. I know he's out traveling. And yeah. And he'll tell you a totally different story. That probably. would be way cool. Be Absolutely. Funny. Yeah. We weren't even on the same ride. <laughs> well, very cool. Thank you for sharing the story. And, uh, you know, it's looking forward to see what your next adventure is. That dirty Kansas got me tickled this year. So, so oddly, sub 10 hours. Okay, so oddly Dude. enough, we were just visiting uh, my wife's best friend. It li- just moved to Kansas City, Kansas. Okay. And I've never heard of the dirty Kansas before. Yeah. I don't know how I've never heard of this. And we were in a local bike shop. And I said, you guys get a lot of riding out here? He's like, well, yeah, I'm in the dirty Kansas. And I'm like, what's that? And he looked at me like, what? Yeah. Hey, where are you from? And he said, mm, not here. And so ever since I've been back, that's all I'm hearing about. Yeah, it, it's getting pretty popular. I mean, yeah. I, I found out about it when Ted King won it. That was the first, okay. I think the first time I heard about it okay. um, because, you know, prior to him doing it, I don't think too many big names right. were doing it. It was like a local thing. Yeah. Um, but that dude, Colin, from, you know, he did it this year and it was a sub 10 hour, 200 mile, 10,000 feet of gain. Wow. And like, that is amazing. That's crazy. That's yeah. That's awesome. So like something like that, that'd be awesome. Yeah. If I could do a 200 mile ride, that'd be cool. Very cool. Yeah. Awesome. For new adventures, I have no clue. Yeah. Right All right. Well, uh, thank you guys for listening and hope you enjoyed this uh, episode of the podcast. Uh, like always, if you like it, please rate us, give us thumbs up, five stars, 10 stars for all that care. And uh, any comments, concerns, find us on Facebook at Mike Pincus Fitness Podcast. And on Instagram, it's at Mike Pincus. And Dan, where can they find you? Uh, Dago Nasty on Instagram. And Dago Dan- Nasty. D-A-G-O-X Nasty. <laughs> It's a play on my Italian heritage and my favorite punk rock band, Dag Nasty. I love um, it. Uh, that's on Instagram. And then Daniel Locascio uh, is my 
full name, and that's on Strava. Very cool. I don't have Facebook, so don't hunt me down and give me bad comments. There you go. All right. Thank you guys very much, and until next time, we'll, uh, we'll talk to you next week. Enunciation. <clears throat> Ow, now, brown cow. The arsonist had oddly shaped feet. <laughs> well, this is going to be a good one. Are we ready? questions the myths the myth busting i listened to that part of that one yep and then i listened to yours yeah and i learned about jonathan and his landscaping father yes yeah. and uh, yeah. Literally that. Just... yeah but you sounded cool because you like you just like had stories and they they went from a to b mine are going to be like from a to c then back to b then you up to f oh. <laughs> you'll be fine with me then. <laughs> it's gonna be so all over the place he's kind of like <clears throat> yeah i don't even know and i bring it back yeah i bring it back no it's that's fine Okay.